So hello, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are at JLP Services, Inc. And I was recently asked about doing a hatchet, a wrapped or welded eye hatchet. And this is a piece of bar stock that one of my friends was nice enough to send me. I don't even know. It looks like it's mystery metal. But you can see where it has a couple holes in it. Uh, so we're actually going to make this into a hatchet. I'm actually looking for about, uh, oh, really between, uh, probably right around two pounds, uh, which is a good size hatchet for what I'm doing. So anyways, uh, it is an inch and, in, well, originally it was two inches by uh, three quarters. Um, and we're going to forge this down some and get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this uh, bolt that's through it and uh, clean it up some, and then we're going to forge it into a... Uh, Wrapped eye hatchet. So the first thing I'm doing is actually getting rid of uh, all of that really bad rust. And then I'm going to actually, you can see right here where all that rust pretty much just fell out. So really we need to kind of figure out what this material is. Even now I'm contemplating just, just making this hatchet and being done with it. Seems to move okay. So I think I'm actually going to just use that section there and account for the missing material on the next half. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pull out so what we do is we're going to mark it at two inches. So we're going to mark it at two inches. <coughs> is there a blade? Um, yep. So we want about an inch. We want about an inch for the eye. And then we're going to need a half inch, or three quarters inch for the pole. So at least three quarters of an inch for the pole. We want one inch for the eye. And then two inches. So overall, we're looking at about uh, six, six, um, Call it seven inches. So two, yeah, six and three quarter inches is what we're looking at starting off with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to center punch where these individual pieces are going. And really the only important aspect of this is right now is actually where the uh, pole is going to be or the back side of the pole is going to be. So that's going to be right here to here. And we're going to actually start forming this first. We're going to have to make some adjustment because this is going to end up being long. But I'm actually hoping to go wider than longer. Uh, this isn't going to be a traditional design. This is going to be more of a modern design in a hatchet. I want a wider cutting face. So I'm going to mark that out right now. And I'm going to have to remark these because we're going to lose our marks as soon as we start putting in the, the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough out the eye first and then we'll come back in and scarf this. This is some really rusty stuff. You can see the rust popping off of it as I hit it. So right now in the trailer, it's only about 30 degrees. Yes, we are in a trailer. So anyways, why is that good is that it gave me some time to pre-warm the anvil. 
So what I'm going to do now is come back in here. And this is kind of cool because this is actually going to be put in at an angle. So I'm just going to kind of like pre-mark this. Just enough. Yep. So I'm going to take a full heat on it and do the drawing out now. Anytime you're working with really rusty stock, you have to be very careful that when, every time you hit it, stuff is going to pop off of it. So you've got to make sure that when you're working on it, that you actually keep that in mind. So all I'm really doing is looking at drawing widthwise. I'm trying to gain some mass and height here, and I'm trying to taper that out. So you can see it kind of has a tapered shape to it. No idea what this material is, other than that it's pretty darn old. You can see all the crap that's included. It almost looks like a some sort of wrought iron product, but it's not moving like wrought iron. Really pretty strange stuff. and the old rust that's inside. You can see we're getting there now. We're going to come back in. We're going to leave that about, oh, Three quarter of inches wide, right there. Well, that works. A bit more. There we go.
<clears throat> we want to make sure that there's a good radius in here and in here, and then we're not getting any cold shuts or any lapping. just a little bit thicker in the center, that's okay. But ideally, we want our eye shape or our material around the eye to be pretty even at the top and the bottom. So this is pretty much where we're ending up at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in and thin this down a little bit more and dress it. So all we're doing now is we're evening up the, the areas here. This is actually going to be folded around. This is actually the back section or the pole. And this will be the inside, so if it's a little bit rough, that's okay. Looks good. So here's our drift. That looks right on the money. So, um, what I'm going to do is I need to thin this out a little bit and I need to draw it this way. So we're going to make it a little bit wider. This is actually the bottom, this is the top. And, uh, we're going to pull this down this way just a little bit. So I decided I want to make this a heavy hatchet. So we're actually going to use this mandro. Well, maybe we won't. Yeah, okay, never mind. We're just going to make it a large hatchet. I just wanted more handle material, uh, but this will work.
And this is some weird stuff. It's got a grain to it. See, it's got a grain to it, but I don't know. I have no idea what the stuff is. You can see where it's sheared right here when I hit it. So we're going to put one heck of a welding heat on it and see if we can get that to uh, go back to where it belongs. Apart. Okay. Uh, well, what I actually think now is that we're going to cut off. I think we're going to cut it off. Um, because this side needs to be thinned down a little bit, and, yep, I'm going to mark it, then heat that up. So this, this bar is some really, really kind of low quality wrought iron. Uh, you can see where it's really the grain structure is huge. You can see how the, the filament or the way the grain runs, there's just these large segments. It's not uh, very refined at all. So this is going to be interesting doing this. It should be pretty if we can get it to go. So you can see here, I just snapped it off, and you can see where the layers, the layers are completely separate. So you can actually see right here where this bar is actually not, uh, not very well forged, and you see all the different layering. It's actually a stacked, it's a stacked and welded uh, affair. So this is going to be interesting as I'll get up.
this is just some pretty bad red iron. You can see how it's all separated through here. And this is going to be interesting. If I can get this to bend, then uh, we can actually get this thing to weld. We're going to be in pretty good shape. I need to thin this section down a little bit more before we take the weld on it. So, corner maybe. Pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now with any luck, we can actually get this bad boy to actually bend in the center without cracking or breaking. So this is actually the inside, this is the outside. Now with a lighter hammer, I need to come in and work at the back of the pole and pull all the material forwards of that. So I'm not hitting back in here. I'm actually hitting way out here to bend it over. Because I've got to pull that material in or else it'll snap. Right there, you can see where that side is still stuck inside. Okay, that works. Quite nicely.
<clears throat> so we're not exactly lined up pretty darn close, but you can see where this side is just a little bit taller. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, open this up just slightly. Um, and I'm going to weld in the tool steel. Um, actually, we're going to adjust that a little bit first. So we're going to use a piece of 5160 for the cutting edge. What I'm going to do right now is actually just a little bit of forcing on here. Let it to match up just a little bit better. You can see they're really close. I've got one, the part that was messing with me earlier. I'm going to draw that down just a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Yay long, so right to the eye. That works. So because the wrought iron is having a tendency to split, I decided that it actually weld in the tool steel first uh, in order to draw it out lengthwise, in other words, to get the width in the blade that I want. Um, the only thing is, is now, because of that, I didn't, I didn't make it the way I usually like it, which is to leave a gap for this to sit in. I was concerned that if I continue down that road that this would just split. So I do think I'm going to weld this first and then come back and insert this in. <laughs> 